Right. Isle of Wight. There we go. Isle of Wight. Access. Portsmouth. Catch the Fairy. And um, Isle of Wight. So we're going to start on the south side of Isle of Wight here. So anything in the southwest wind, um, strong southwest sleep, it's not bad. So um, you have to find yourself fishing on this side. Um, so let's just say we've got the weather. We'll just we'll start here anyway. We'll forget what the weather's doing. So there's an area um, called Chale. Chale Bay. Some very steep cliffs here. I'm talking about from where you park the car around about here. A good 15 minutes down at the beach. So it's for the young angler. It's not for the OAP. Um, this area here. Um, it's a sort of sort of crazy thing I would have done in my twenties. Um, so yeah, this, this stretch of beach along here has got a good reputation. I'm just going to um, um, read out. Some information I found about it. Um, so it says Channel Bay. It says um, this mark can be found along the A3055 military road running between Black Gang and Freshwater Bay. There's plenty of parking in a free car park on the seaward side of the road. A short walk to the cliff top access is via Whale Chime. There is a sign saying access to the beach is closed. This sign has been up for at least 10 years. Ignore it. There used to be wooden steps all the way down, but due to land slides, the bottom half are missing. A track being made by local anglers continues from where the steps end. This is not a venue for people with a fear of heights. Also, don't attempt during wet weather as a track down is very slippery. So that's a key one. If it's peeing down the rain, don't even go there. It's an exposed shingle beach which stretches for over a mile, backed by impressive cliffs reaching 150 feet in height, and it's safe to fish here over low water if you are unfamiliar with the area as there's risk of cliff falls and of being cut off by the tide. Also check setting up where the high tide mark is as in place the tide will come in to the base of the cliff. So it doesn't sound too dissimilar from where I fish and they're sort of decisions that I have to make when I fish certain areas of my coast. Um, yeah if it's like that I mean like say fish the ebb, um, don't walk too far where the, where the cliff goes up and down, your access up and down, literally fish there. So if you do start feel like the you know on a biggish tide that you're getting cut off, you just simply go back up the route you came. That's where if you've walked 200 yards to the left or the right and you, you're cut off, you're buggered. You can't get back up the cliff, you can't get back to your gap. So just a bit of common sense. you would probably be right on medium tides. Um, big tides may be a nuisance with weed and things like that. It can make it difficult. So maybe your neeps would be better there. Um, let's just hit the keyboard. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's that's Chale Bay there. So just to zoom in a little bit, see what we're talking about. So you can see these houses here, and you basically the anglers have um, you know, made a series of. It's, it's basically just coming to the area and having a little look before you fish it and just identifying where those routes are. But you'll find there'll be some angler trails down here. And you probably just want to fish out in front here, to be perfectly honest. I wouldn't go walk for miles and miles up there. You might, if you really, you know, a local would probably say, oh, well, I park up here and I just fish down here. You know, no one, hardly any angler pressure on there at all. Um, so, very interesting area. I'll go into a bit more detail because it's actually got some really good fish on there. Um, for some sort of specimen fish. Um, so, uh, it's also not a venue to fish when a large swell is present and always go in company. So, yeah, it's a sort of, it's, like I say, it's a very exposed beach. That's what I was saying right at the beginning about being, so, you know, southwest exposed. You know, be good and easterly. 
um, good in an orderly. But you know, anything from the from the south or southwest, you're going to get absolutely munted. Um, so, yeah, China is best known for its ray fishing, with several ten pound plus specimens landed here each year. The fishing normally kicks off around April for the rays, mostly small eye painted. There's some cracking size undulates, and the odd blonde will turn up, plus the obligatory spot run. There you go. If you're chasing a, your, your PB um, ray, that's the, the place to go, mate. Night tides are best, but plenty are still caught during the day, especially the water's coloured. You know, classic during the day coloured water. If the rays are feeding, then they can be caught at any state of the tide, but the last two hours of the flood, all right, the last two hours of the flood and the ebb are the best to try. Bait should be good quality, frozen or fresh sanders for the best chance of success, but strips of mackerel or fillets or powder can sometimes be just as effective. Rig should be simple, yeah, I'd agree with that. A single hook, yeah. Nylon pattern nostril or a running ledger is most popular. The hook should be strong as a size 2 over 4 over. Conditions are best for the ray fish when there is some colour in the water and a good sea is running due, during or just after a blow. As well as rays, trail off a pound dogfish bass with quite a few ten pound plus being caught each year. And the occasional turbot, cod or cong. The beach shells steeply and the whole squid or large fillet of mackerel fish close in will account for the bass. And also a good chance of a pollock. There we are. With many around the four pound mark and the occasional one of double. During the summer, mackerel are often venture into shore, and it's well worth taking a set of feathers with you. So, what about that then? For a, for a spot, big bass, big rains, conger. Sounds like anything could turn up there. Um, just along there. Just along there, I'll just zoom out. That is chain. Just here. Right, basically the most southern point of the island. Pretty much, just that area there. So, there you go, mate. There you go. So that's one spot. That's one spot to try. Chao. Chao, you son of a bitch. Right. Okay. So let's rattle through this. Sorry, I'm taking a bit too long, but I've not um, read too much of this. I'm just sort of intrigued myself. Um, Atherfield. Atherfield. Have you fished at Aberfield? I have a cup of tea, I'm going a bit crazy. Um, Aberfield, here we are. So it's just a bit further north along that military road there. All right, so I imagine you just park outside the farmer's gate and there'll be a little um, National Trust path or something like that. So let's just zoom in a bit. Okay, let's just zoom in. Zoom in. Yeah. Channel Bay. Edland here. I see a lot of milkiness here where the tide rips through. A lot of tide on that point there, so you probably want to tuck, tuck in here somewhere. So you've either got to park up and walk down and find a way down. So you might find it's a bit easier access up here than the other spot. You probably get similar species here as well. But anyway, I'll, do, I'll just read what I found. Um, so, you know, another mark to be found along the military road. Um, coming from Black Gang, Black Gang, as we just were, drive past the car park for China. Parking is on a grass bird just before Atherfield Holiday Camp. The footpath is signposted and is via Shepherd Chine. Reasonably easy, decent to the beach. Um, just, just a bit better. Um, this is a steep shingle beach stretching from the rocks of Atherfield Ledge in the east to Dutchman's Point, a very deep watermark in the west. Many excellent fish have been taken from this section of coast in recent years, including several 40 pound plus conga. What about that? With a best of 64 pound, can you believe that? 
also rays can be caught from the entire length of the beach, though not as good a venue for them as Chael. Mm. Though the island record under the ray came from Dutchman's, being just over 17 pounds, bass are another frequent species with many good specimens taking baits intended for conga. Yep. Got a good fish caught by accident. Uh, the seabed is extremely rocky in places, but it's often possible to find a clear spot by moving a few yards along the beach. Okay, so if you start snagging up, just move. Don't just stay there and persevere with it. As soon as you, as soon as you get snagged, just move. 20, 30 yards, and again. And also, if you're clambering down them sort of cliffs, you don't want to be taking them. You know, six, seven sets of legs with you. I mean, when I go fishing, I don't really like losing any gear. I'm, I, I, I will go with like four leads as a precaution, so to speak. Years ago, I used to take loads, but you don't use half of them. But you know, you shouldn't. If you lose two sets of gear, oh, you that's, that's curtains. I mean, I'd probably go on if I lost two sets of gear. Anyway, I'll carry on. Chance of connecting to a large conga is a real possibility, so it is wise to use gear capable of ha handling one. A good beach caster would be fine, and a heavy reel loaded with line, but at least 25 pound brackets should be used. We use a pulley rig with a 150 pound mono hook snood and at least an 8 open L. Yeah, I think that's a bit OTT, personally. I think you'd go with 18 20 pound line. And you could go with a hundred pound mono, or go with eighty pound mono, something like that, for a conga. You know, they're not all gut hooked. Most fish could get lip hooked. You know, it's a, at least an eight, eight is about right. I would say, yeah. You don't want it too heavy because if you, you know, for like um, a ray or a, uh, a bass to grab it as well, so you don't want a massive, massive hook. But eight O surprisingly, is, when you look at it, is quite can be quite a small hook. Depending on what sort of sort what you get. Um, this sort of tackle should also be capable of casting a large fresh bait, a large sorry fish bait. The popular baits are fresh pouting, cuttlefish, squid, and mackerel. Some anglers take a second rod. Yeah, I would, I would definitely take a second rod. I mean, saying that, I've had some of my best fish um, best sessions just fishing with one rod. But yeah. More stuff to carry, but it's never the same without your second rod, I don't think. Bait with ragworm or mackerel strip in order to catch a supply of fresh powders bait. There you go, there you go. So we're after the live bait. So if you're fishing with live baits for your conga and your bass, um, I'm not sure, uh, the rays would probably take the live bait, but they're more likely to run into a, to a sort of a mackerel sand deal, sort of dead bait on the bottom. So anyway, cut on to short, if you go if you're going for live baits, and you're going to need a large bucket. So you have to carry a big bucket down there with you. Just, you know, don't bother, bother with an aerator, just um, just change the water over every now and again. Um, fishing most productive after dark and on flood tide, but grass and mackerel are caught during daylight. Hmm. All right, that's fair enough. Use ragworm or crab baits for the rest and fish the area around Atherfield Ledge, but beware of the incoming tide cutting you off. Mm -hmm. For conga, the best area is around Dutchman's, with the conga feeding best at slack water. All right, so conga at slack water. Coming on the feeds, the tide beezers. Um, yeah, it's interesting that. Yeah, again, again with um, tide cutoffs. I mean. That's like fish right in front of where you've literally come down the cliff. That's as simple as that. It shouldn't make too much difference where you're fishing. Or just to the side, if there's a snag there, just to the side of it. So if you get in a muddle and the shit hits the fan, you've got route one out of there. No ifs, no buts, no need to worry or panic. You know, you know, it's, it's as simple as that. You go walk walk a mile along the beach, you'll be there, you get yourself in the right muddle. Especially somewhere remote like that, where literally nobody knows where the fuck you are. So you just, you know, just, just play it safe. You'll find the fishing will, will make any iota 
whether you're sort of fishing right where you've come down the cliff or where you walk a mile along the beach. Shouldn't really. Um, but there you go. But if you're going to do a go walking, fish it on the head. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. Um, right, rays will move inshore from mid-April. Depending on the weather, the bass will arrive about the same time, yeah. Although conger can be caught all year round, September till Christmas will give you the best chance of success. Fish a calm, warm, dark night on a neap tide. Yeah. All right, so there you go. There's um, there's a couple of good spots there for you. A bit of a mission to get to, but if you've got a reasonable level of fitness and you take your time, you have some good fun down there. That's for sure. And and you wouldn't get bombarded with tourists, bloody people chucking stones in or members of the public. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like you'd be out just paradise. That's what it'd be down there, mate. That'd be my, my I'd love it down there. Right. So the next one I'm gonna to go to, I'm just gonna zoom out so you can see where we've been. So we've been here. Let's go in a little bit. So we've been here and we've been up here. This bottom south south corner. So there's another spot. I'll try and rattle through it because I don't want to run on too long video. Um, sand down. This area is just a zoom out. Sand down is here, like that. Horse racing place you see on telly sometimes. Um, big town. Um, there's a pier there. Now that pier, that used to be the holder of the bass, the bass record years ago. And the gentleman who caught it back in the day he got a load of stink for um, butchering the fish. The fish was about, I don't know, 19 pounds, something or other. And he got a load of stink. It was the days of um, the forums and no, not really that dissimilar to what it's like with the trolls on, you know, Facebook and this, that and the other. Um, and anyway, cut long story short, he got a load of shit from it and um, he wished he never fucking caught it. And um, this, this, that and the other. But at the end of the day, a fish, when it's that old, I mean, my argument is, is it going to taste any good? Um, you know, you might, but he wanted to weigh it, he wanted to take the tackle shop. Um, should he have killed it? Well, that's his choice. He's caught it. You're legally allowed to take two every 24 hours over 42 centimetres. Um, that's now. I'm not sure what it was back then. It would be probably slightly less than I'd imagine. Um, but anyway, um, He's, you know, no need to feel guilty about it. You know, if you end the day, you know, it's fish and chips, isn't it? And legally allowed to take it. So, um, yeah, sorry to go off the tangent there. So anyway, that 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 pier there, record holder for, for for bass. So there's some good bass off there. You can fish it on a permit, I believe, just during the day. So, you know, that's a shame you can't fish it at night. But there's this area here where I think this L shape. Let's just zoom in on that. This area here, this thing here. So you can see how far it gets you from the from the beach. It's like you pay you pay here somewhere, and you'll let you in at eight, and you'll have fish till I don't know, five o'clock or something like that. It's not ideal, but you just fish along here. And that's where that bass came. Don't know whether it came in there or on the out here. It doesn't really matter. You know, you're out there a fair way. They're on holiday. That'd be my go-to spot, definitely. You just just pay just pay the money, you know, and um, you know you get good access to some reasonable fish, and you you, you know the species you ca catch off there with baits and this that and the others, what you get anywhere else really. Um, but um, yeah, so that's Sandown Pier, um, and let's just let's just have a quick read up, just give you a few pointers for that. So. Um, Float fishing from the pier during the summer months produces mackerel, garfish, pollock, and the occasional mullet. Using small strips of mackerel or a sliver of sand eel for the mackerel and garfish, ragworm for the pollock, and bread for the mullet. Bottom fishing during the day can produce place and bass, while a night pout, sole, and painted ray can be had. Yeah, but you're not allowed to fish at night. On that pier. The ground is sandy, so normal. So unless you fish, you can go fish on the beach, back on the beach um, at night time, no problem. The ground is sandy, so normally clean ground rigs are suitable. Clipped 
down rigs for distance or running ledger or flappers for close ring. Most baits will work, including worm, mackerel, and swim. Good quality sandals will be best for the range. The current UK best rack nut records caught from the pier. Right, um, fishing from the sandy beaches at Yaverland is best done at night, so I think that's just north of that as the beach gets extremely crowded. Casting long distances with rank or like one can produce place, sole, bass, and pound clip down ridges and sand hill will take some good rays. So, yeah, during the day, summer, tourists, nightmare, night time, fine. Um, yeah, as for getting bait, I mean, we'll, we'll go into that at the end. Um, obviously, your tackle shops for really your bait in, um, but I do like to dig mine. Um, Walking eastwards towards Redcliffe, the seabed becomes increasingly rocky and the quality of fishing improves. This is especially good for sole in the autumn using rag or lug as bait on a size 4 wishbone ring. Ray fishing can also be good at times using sand eel on a size 3 -oh or 4 -oh hooks on a clip down with a distance. So, I think we're talking about this area up here, Yaverland. Yeah, Yaverland, just there. It's a bit more rocky as we get up here. Neighbour land, so you're not too far from the main road. Probably a little bit easier there. I mean, I'm not being funny, but there's, you're literally spoiled for choice. Um, you know, where you can go along here and what you want to do. It looks like some rockier ground here at this place called Benbridge, just around here. That looks like it'll be good for bass on there with some poppers and things. Um, years ago, there was a book done by a chap called Alan Yates. Mike Lavell, and maybe somebody else, I can't remember. In this area here, Ventnor, I think that's where it was. This stretch of coast here, just around the corner from Channel Bay, where we were just then talking about. He done a whole chapter on fishing the Isle of Wight. I think he was, Alan Yates was actually from the Isle of Wight. And um, there's some good bass fishing along here. Seriously, some good bass fishing, but you need to mix up your techniques. You need to sort of stray line with like fresh peeler crab and fish and live sand eels and float fish sand eels and all that sort of stuff. And um, but looking at that, you, you want to use lures, won't you? Metal lures for that. Got pollock there as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're interested in, in, in ordering that book, because that's a, that's, a, that's a really good book. Um, it taught me a lot. Um, it's called... Um, what's it called? Do you know what? I, oh, my brain is absolutely frazzled today from work. Um, Hooked on Bass. Hooked on Bass, it's called. By Alan Yates. And... Um, some wicked information in there, right? So, what else have we got? So, in the rocks underneath the chalk cliffs, it's a good spot to try for a conga. Try it on a warm, dark, calm night in autumn. I'm using cuttle, squid, mackerel, or pounce bait. Beware of the tiger, as you are like to run out of beach. Beware of cliff falls, as these could sit. seriously spoil your fishing. Yeah, I'll worry about cliff falls and things after you've had some heavy rainfall, maybe. But you don't want to be too paranoid, you know. I think he's talking about this area here. Some of that conks, getting some congas up around that area there. Another thing to do if you're on the island, just, just go to the local tackle dealer, tackle shop, and just say, hey, I've got some ideas. And he might say, you know, so and so's fishing well, this is fishing well. Do you know what I mean? Um, okay. Do, 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 do. How long am I taking? I'm not sure how long I'm taking actually. Um, well, too long. Um, shankling. Shankling. Right, shankling. 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 There it is. Just south of Sandown. Let's just quickly rattle through shankling. Shankland Beach looks like tourist capital of the world. It's not my cup of tea. I'm more that other side jail. I'd rather do that in the dark. There's no one around. 
have it all for myself. Fishing can be difficult during the day because of babies, so fishing at night is preferred by the locals. There's plenty of parking on the entire length of the Esplanade. As you drive down the steep road to the front, the first place to is a car park almost opposite. This is known as the Lowe's of the Stink Pot, due to the fact the sewage pipe once fed out in the sea. Ground is mixed, some rocks, sandy patches. Expect bass, pilot, pound, dogfish, rays, and the chance for conga. This is also a good spot to try for autumn cold. That's another thing, these beaches in the winter time, you you know, the awesome cold beaches. Fishing is possible the entire length of the seafront. The next proper spot to the site of the old pier, long since gone. This is area of the clocks, it's right around the area of the clock. Similar species at the stink part are likely though a lot more snaggy, so rough brown reeds are central and the likelihood of conga is higher. Further west towards the point, the ground becomes less snaggy until you get to the point and reef. This is a good spot to try to place bass, sole, and rain. So, see some rough ground out here. He's talking about this sort of stuff here. The old congas. Yeah, like you say, if you're there for a week, you can't you can't go everywhere. You've got to go go with what you like doing the most and just focus on an area where you think that's where you want to go. I mean, I, I personally think that the ones I've just reeled off so far, I think autumn, sort of September, October, I think this area here would be fucking awesome. Long here. I really do. That would be one of my UK go-to spots for beach fishing. That really would, this area here. That screams a decent fish all day long. That really does. Really, really does. No, 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 no. Fort Victoria. Right, I'm just gonna. It's an area called Black Gang. It's pretty much what I've already said about Chow Bay, really. But it talks about Black Gang, so I'm just gonna read this out. I've not read this before. So there's a car park up there. This area here. Black Gang. Right. This is a big fish venue, so it's sounding like very similar to what we were talking about. Where almost anything can turn up. Fishing on the far point is most popular for painted rays, spotted rays, smooth down and bass, where they can be caught along the entire length of the beach. The water is very deep and the tide run is extremely fierce, particularly on the flood tide. Fish here on the edge with sand eel or mackerel for the rays and crab for the smooth hand bass will take all baits, but mackerel and cod are particularly effective. The eastern end of the bay is known as a rockin. End. This month is also best fished on the ebb, but be prepared to lose some tackle fish here during the day for some good sized rass, bass, and mackerel, or at night for conga, bass, and pollen. A short distance east of here is Watershoot Bay, a small, very rocky cove. Fish here at low tide, up a high, high walk for some good rass, bass, and conga. This is also an area we'll try for mud, which can often be seen including a high tide. Plunge from bass may also pay dividends. My most watering. So I think, did he say Watershoot Bay? Rockin... This area here. Very remote. It looks like there's a pathway up here. Look, see this old Black Gang Road, look. It looks like there's a pathway. There's a car park there. It looks like you can walk around here. Walk down here. Water shoe bay. Look, this for me, this looks really good for plugging for bass along here. Deep, deep. You can hop on the beach along here. And there's the black gang there. So it looks a very, very, very tidy spot. That bottom corner of the Isle of Wight looks very, very tidy indeed. Very tidy. This has got long legs, this stretch, mate. It's got long, long legs. Um, so, so, there's an area, Fort Victoria, just on the other side, I'm just going to do one more, just on the other side of the island. There's a few fresh water places here as well, so, there's some different bits and pieces Round here, but I'm not. I'm, I might go into the north side a bit and on another time. We'll just do one up here. If I can find it. Norton. Freshwater. Yarmouth. 
Here's the needles, just here. Some good cod fishing off there. Right. More way, a mile west of Yarmouth. So, Yarmouth, a mile west. So it's here somewhere. Fort Albert. Fresh water. Can't find it. It's not showing up. Head from Yarmouth heading towards fresh water. That was it, wasn't it? Freshwater. So that's that looks like Fort Fort Albert. So it's got to be around right here somewhere, unless it's up there or something. It says a mile west of this place. So anyway, we'll assume it's around about there. So you're nearly touching the mainland, Key Haven, Milford on the sea. Look, look at that. You got to see that man. Tide roaring through there, man. That's incredible. Isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Anyway, right, just nearly there. Right, the old Victorian fort is situated about a mile west of Yarmouth, probably 8 30 54 out of Yarmouth, heading towards fresh water over the bridge, and the road will bend sharply to the left. Going up the hill, there is a sign for Fort Victoria. Turn into West Hill Lane and follow this to the end. This is Fort Victoria. This is plenty of free parking. I just want for a family fishing trip. There's a large barbecue area. Fishing's best done at night. Casting from the wall puts your bait into deep water up to 50 feet deep. Wow. Now we're talking. Tide runner's extremely fierce on the edge, so fishing is best over low water and during the last few hours of flood for short casting at large fish. Late can produce some good bass. The area can be snaggy, the gear losses can be high, so pull your rig with a rotten bottom leg is the preferred setup. This area is very popular with locals and can get very busy. Other species caught here include pout, bream, cod, and the occasional conger. During the summer, mackerel often come within casting distance and can be caught on feathers towards high tide. To the west, the beach towards Fort Albert is shallower, sandy, interspersed with areas of rock, and is well known for sole, lugworm, or rag are both equally effective for these when fish are on calm even tide. To the east runs Norton Royal. Species caught here are mainly small rats, pollock, green bass, and dogfish. Norton Wall, did I see that? Norton there, Norton Wall, so something, something around here. Alright, as for bait, as for bait, I assume that this, this estuary here at low tide may produce some ragworm and cream. There'd definitely be some mullet in there, looking at that, all this weed. There, that be my number one place for it. Well, what? And in the harbour as well. There's a pier here. This is Yarmouth Pier. That might be worth a fish. It's not too big of a river. Get bait. Clamakin Lake. Clamakin Lake. Cows. East cows. Newport, down to Newport. These muddy stretches here. You'd be do some good bait digging around there. Failing that, the old peeler crab. Get some peeler crabs at low tide. Ride, ride pier. It's a lovely place. Looks brilliant for fishing. Absolutely brilliant. Tried it there. Um, okay. That's it. I would have liked to have fast tracked it a bit more, but. The, um, the detail was just too good, which I managed to find. So, I hope that's of use to you. To say, if someone was to say, where do I want to go fishing the most? I'd say, well, a couple of surf casters. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Many more videos come along the way, and I will see you later. Our feeder then. Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that'll do. <laughs> I've completely gone insane. Right, so, when do I turn this bloody thing off? So I do that, and I do.